We have to be incredibly clear on what our goals are. Essentially, what are we really after, right? And with respect to the goals, what assumptions are we happy to live with? And these two are absolutely important as you go through the sort of modeling process. What are the goals? What are the assumptions? So let's outline sort of what are generally uh, sort of acceptable goals or desirable goals is uh, tractability and predictability. You don't want to be in a situation where your assumptions are so diluted that you make excellent analytical progress, but any results that you actually get are not so applicable in the real world. On the other hand, you don't want the assumptions to be so restrictive that it's actually difficult to make any analytical progress. So you want to find that sort of nice balance between uh, analytical tractability and the assumptions that you make in a manner that you get uh, good results, results which are also uh, predictable, especially when applied into the real world. So in this case, uh, what does uh, you know, a good algorithm look like? I mean, that's what essentially we would be after. Uh, we'd be after uh, you know, a good algorithm. But what does a good algorithm really mean? In this context, and for now, we will restrict our attention to a good algorithm means a fast algorithm. In another context, uh, you may also want to sort of balance between its performance, i.e. how good and fast it is, perhaps with respect to how fair it might be. But for now, we're going to restrict our attention to good algorithm means a fast algorithm. We have to be very careful when we identify our assumptions. And in, in a sense, what we have to be also careful of is that any results that we get, the enthusiasm for those results has to be tempered with the underlying assumptions that has led to those results. So what we're going to do is sort of we're going to outline three broad assumptions. And these assumptions will sort of act as pillars uh, for us as we sort of go through uh, the journey of the analysis of algorithms. So let's start with assumption number one. And assumption number one says that we are happy to stick with the worst case inputs. You could, of course, consider situations where you have the best case uh, or an average case or a typical case. And it is true that in certain cases, and especially when you have domain knowledge, where you have extra domain knowledge, uh, it is possible that you could actually get slightly better results, but that would normally be at the cost of tractability. But if you don't want to be very uh, domain specific in your analysis and you want a sort of framework which applies broadly across domains, then if you are looking at sort of tractability and practicality, uh, in particular with respect to the predictability, then dealing with or being happy with worst case inputs is not a bad assumption at all. Now assumption number two says that we are happy to leave out some actually details. Now what that means is that we are okay to leave out the low order terms and we are also okay to leave out the constants which are sitting in front of the leading coefficients. Remember we had the sort of example when we were trying to motivate the big O notation. Uh, we had this sort of uh, function which looked like 3n square plus 3n plus 3 and we were actually happy to leave out the 3n plus 3 and we were also happy to leave out the three which was sitting in front of the n squared. And hence, for that slightly more complicated looking function, which was three n squared plus three n plus three, we were able to make a statement that this is essentially order n squared. So this assumption also helps us uh, in tractability uh, and it also has a relevance for predictability. It's, it's not just for analytical tractability, uh, but at a certain level, uh, it still has predictive power. In assumption number three, we say we are actually happy to deal with large input sizes, essentially what constitutes asymptotic analysis. So the natural question to ask is why? Why do we want to or why are we happy to deal with large input sizes as compared to small or medium size input sizes? The answer is actually fairly uh, simple. One is that compute power is only getting bigger and better. So as a result of which small input sizes don't really pose much of a computational challenge. And finally, uh, input sizes, i.e. data, is only getting larger and larger. So it does make a lot of sense to say 
that, you know what, our attention will be focused on that particular regime, the regime where the input sizes actually get really large. In another video, we had actually talked about the sort of two worlds, you know, the real world and the abstract world. Um, and we will be making sort of, you know, excursions from the real world into the abstract world and from the abstract world into the real world. And we'll keep doing this back and forth, back and forth. And the reason we want to do it is because that is what will allow us to achieve our goals. And in this case, our goals are a combination of tractability and predictability. But when we are doing this, and as we are trying to reach our goals, we have to be incredibly clear on our assumptions. Simple as they may be, but they have to be sensible, which will actually allow us to reach the goals that we've set for ourselves, which is tractability and predictability.